good afternoon, good evening and good night. Welcome to Abstract Medicine. Thank you so much for joining here, letting me read your energies today. It's a very peaceful, beautiful morning here in the countryside in England. And as always, I'm looking outside <laughs> the window. I had a little pause and I was asked by Spirit to do a reading for the collective divine love about divine love okay so i've got some decks and um we're going to be using the activation card so what's being activated uh we're going to be using the starman tarot deck we're also going to be using the romance angels and also the founder siècle kipper deck okay so it's going to be, I think, a, a beautiful in-depth reading. The energy is very sweet and peaceful, um, not just because of where I am, but also because the energy for the collective with regards to divine love is um, at peace somehow. OK, so that's what I'm picking up on. The channeling is already starting to come through. So if you'd like to go and get a cup of tea or a coffee or a strong drink of your choice, get comfortable. Do that now. Uh, pause the video before you do that and come back and uh, we will get into it. Please do like the video as well if it resonates with you. Please press the like button. Please also sub sub <laughs> subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to Abstract Medicine on YouTube here on YouTube, Abstract Medicine, so that you are notified when the next video is, but also as a way of giving thanks to the channel uh, and if you've been following abstract medicine for a long time please do do that it's um it really means a lot to me and uh, also for the community in general to to be updated um but also for others who are also being called their for their soul to be called into um getting more guidance with regard to divine love for uh their life path as well as many other things that i do here as a mystic so yeah let's uh, let's do that so thank you angels and sisters guides for that intro <laughs> but also um i also want to say that um it's been a real joy reading for you these last three years um me coming out of the spiritual closet so to speak it's been a real joy um for your private bookings and also for the collective general readings as well. It really has genuinely been a real joy um, to do this. Um, and actually, to be honest, a dream come true, I feel. Um, I always knew I was I was to be of service somehow since I was a youngster. I didn't know that it was going to be um, one element of my instrument, um, one string to my violin was going to be healing um, in the sort of traditional sense. So thank you so much for being on the journey here and also for your private bookings to um, from past, present and future. So thank you. So let's have a look for divine love. OK, there is, there is immense gratitude um, from my end, but also there is immense gratitude for your existence um, within the divine love connection as well. So both individuals um are feeling immense gratitude now it goes without saying um that here we are pro lgbtq plus um so if you ever feel if you ever feel that you are marginalized somehow in the community here in abstract medicine then i would say check yourself on that because you know we are very very liberal minded here um, and just because we don't necessarily always use the right terminology, you shouldn't be offended by that. You should look in the mirror and see why you're being offended. You know, sometimes we we like to um, use terminologies like masculine and feminine as a way to decipher the energies in a lexicon of simplicity essentially okay so i mean that with love and i know that you understand that i mean that with love and respect but you must not be offended you must not be offended <laughs> look you see that okay so we have divine masculine and we have the merkaba okay so 
I was speaking about masculine and masculine and feminine, masculinity and femininity as um, energies, but also genders as well. Okay, and how one must not be offended. So I felt like this card and the Merkaba is coming through to be to be seen and also to be activated. So the divine masculine is being activated at this time. Divine masculinity is being activated at this time. Lots of blue here as well. Gorgeous card. You may want to um, take a screenshot of that if you feel. The frequency of divine masculine supports our strong, focused and active side, allowing it to express itself while helping us to bring our dreams and ideas into form with kindness and wisdom. 22. 22 is the divine love number as well. I'm also going to take out the Merkaba. Interesting how I flipped this card and the fertility card came out. I flipped the deck and the fertility card came out. I also do feel like this is important because the, the fertility card came out in the general collective messages for um, the community over on Abstract Medicine as a daily message. So we're going to also be taking that out too. So I actually feel called to put the fertility card over here. I feel like you'll you'll feel that too. You'll feel that that resonates better. Um, I actually want to read this um, this guidebook at the end, so I'm going to put it to the side. got my holy jumper <laughs> or jersey I only wear it at home but it's quite a nice color blue interesting how blue is going to be um is very significant today blue is very significant today um so blue as we know is the color chakra of the um of the throat chakra which is uh, I just had vocation so vo vo vocal cords um, speaking, um, you know, speaking truth. Um, it's the energy of the, of the king and queen of swords as well. Um, so if there's been any communication that has been lacking between the divine counterparts, then um, I do see that there is going to be an activation of vocalisation, communication of truths. Um, there is a birth of something new here as well, and with the Merkaba, Merkaba is the is the um, is the crystal, is the chariot of the. Uh, there's a pigeon <laughs> staring over, going, "What is she doing?" I love it because they always they always ground me. Um, these birds, they always ground me. They're like, "What the fuck is she doing?" <laughs> um, it just makes me laugh. I can just see its head just twisting over, just trying to look in. Like, so I just wave, go hi. <laughs> Hello. Um and um but yeah they just ground me. They just make me laugh. Why do they make me laugh so much? Okay, it's flown off. <laughs> you know, again there's this energy of like sweetness, of peace, you know, the birds signify air energy, don't they? They signify communication, they signify travel. And we also have, you know, the king and queen of swords energy. I feel the king of swords, to be honest, here with the divine masculine. Um, but I feel like the divine masculine is integrating the feminine energy within them. OK, so they are becoming more unison. Um, and with the Merkaba energy, it's the um, it's the chariot. It's the chariot um, traditionally in the um, major arcana, which is all about fast movement, uh, focus uh, towards success. So the divine masculine is focusing their energy towards great success, towards you, essentially. So there is travel involved here. Um, they have a strong focus, as we read earlier, um, a, a strong focus to express themselves, to bring their dreams and ideas into reality, into form, uh, with kindness and wisdom. And here with the Merkaba, we have the energy of Archangel Metatron. So Archangel Metatron, for me, has, has to be honest, has always been an energy of masculinity. Um, 
other other archangels um have you know masculine energies predominantly but also feminine energies too but i feel that uh, merkaba has always been a masculine energy um nothing bad nothing nothing good just neutral but it's the energy i feel that's really been helping the archangel that's really been helping the divine masculine to come into the into the forefront um particularly if they've been focused on other things you know or their attention has been elsewhere the divine masculine has has been helped by um metatron archangel metatron to 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 focus and to alchemize because you know i, sp I spoke about at the very beginning if you're being offended if i don't use the right terminology and i'm saying masculine and feminine femininity masculinity and femininity then it's got a lot more to do with you you being insulted than it does with me you know as a healer um and here in the community then you're not in the right channel and you're not in the right frame of mind to be honest um with the frequency that i deliver here and that we are all in collectively because this is all interconnected um community here okay so the masculine energy here um, is identified with the triangle upright okay and the feminine energy is identified here with the triangle um that is going downward okay so we have this connection with the masculine and feminine and so the star is essentially being symbolized here the star you know the star of the blend between the masculine and feminine this identity of the masculine and feminine the star in esoteric and gnosticism uh, texts is very very ancient it's very ancient because it's always been about um combining uh the masculine energy and the feminine energy it is in nature it is in nature there is a feminine energy in nature and there's a masculine energy in nature there is a force in nature and there is a receptivity and fertility in nature okay so these are part of the divine principles i'm hearing from spirit i'm hearing from spirit this these are divine princ principles that cannot be altered or changed no matter if you change your sex no matter if you change your identity you will always have this masculine energy and feminine energy within you whether it is imbalanced or not is up to you to decide and for you to work on is what is being channeled here okay so this is what Mer this is what Archangel Metatron is is saying here that there are great changes that are taking place within the masculine archetype, um, within themselves, also within their psyche, that there is a great change within them that is um, balancing out here. Now the change is identified with the numerology with thirty two rounding down to a five. Okay, so five is change and possibly conflict challenges as well so this is a this has been a challenge within the masculine energy archetype okay so the divine counterpart that is a masculine archetype this is who i'm speaking to and about so um the masculine archetype is uh, maybe feeling challenged maybe they didn't want to look into that feminine energy their feminine urge you know their sensitive side essentially their nurturing side um their sweetness you know their um their their self love uh, their expression of love to other masculines in a platonic fashion their um expression of of brotherhood um their expression of um camaraderie within the 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 um, the masculine um archetype community okay so say for example you are a male and you are a predominant masculine arch archetype um you have been working on how to express your feelings to other men um and how much you've been appreciating them as men you know not being afraid to express your love for not only your fellow man okay so it's a contested word i'm not going to go into the academics and theoretics of that theory theory of that um but I will say that, um, well, man is a contentious subject. Human is a contentious subject because it can and has in theoretical theory. I mean, this is me being an art artist academic, um, has discounted the female as being part of the human um, race, essentially. OK, so so this this could also just be um, part of 
the cleansing and clearing up and cleaning out of the distorted uh, patriarchal systems as well, which is what the masculine has been feeling. And also I feel the divine masculine has been um, becoming a leader within themselves to um, show the world, but not only shall the world show themselves the true, the, their true self. Okay, now their true self is, you know, it's been scary. It's been scary um, for them to look in the mirror, to look into the look into the mirror and say, look, for example, I am a white middle class male and be OK with saying that statement. You know, that the, there is there is an energy of ownership here um, and not being shamed or ashamed um here as well now at the very beginning as i said you know if you are offended if that i don't use the right terminology that you feel appropriate for you then it says a lot more about you than it does about me and here with the collective here on abstract medicine the community that we've all been collectively um and um we've been creating as a community of inclusivity now, what is it in the divine masculine energy archetype that doesn't feel inclusive? Maybe it's because they don't they feel ashamed that they are, say, for example, a white middle class male. Or say, for example, they are a black middle class male. Or an Asian middle class male. Or an Asian lower class male or an Asian lower class male non-binary individual that is struggling with these new forms of identification and struggling with their own ideology because you know in each country in each community in each context there is an ideology there that is kind of inescapable somehow unless we go into critical thinking and actually go within and do some self-reflection of who am I? What am I? What am I doing? In which part of the human identity, human race am I part of? You know, so these big questions are taking place um, on a conscious level within the divine masculine energy uh, archetype or even an unconscious level. And I feel like this has been aided by Archangel Metatron. So it says here, the frequency of Merkaba supports our ability to use our consciousness to traverse into other layers of reality and dimensions. It activates our access to our Akashic inheritance as well, merging the totality of our experiences into our present to serve our highest purpose. OK, so that's exactly it. So I feel like for a lot of divine masculine archetypes, they're looking at how they can lead by example beyond the framework of the patriarchal um, ideology, essentially. And I feel like they have they have been led by through inspiration um, by the divine feminine who has been creating, who has been creating um with a courageous energy here it says here the frequency of fertility invites us to be more open uh more courageous more creative and more joyful than we were before it activates the potential for something beautiful to grow from our consciousness into a new and grander expression of ourselves now it's not to say that the world needs to be a matriarchal system it's about the balance of both here. It's about the balance of both. Now, the divine connection, the divine love connection is about both individuals coming into unity within themselves and then coming into unity physically with each other and then being examples in the world out there that it is possible to be matriarchal and patriarchal and to converse and communicate here with the vocal cords energy of blue to be a divine expression of that unity here with the star. Now, I do see here with the star, it is an energy of public figure, public presence here. OK, so there is prob a public 
fig there is um, public leadership here with the divine masculine archetype. So they could be well known in their field. They've been working on uh, speaking their truths. And I genuinely mean their own personal truths as fact, not just also as just, you know, um, you know, my m mythical truths. Um, but it's because they've been going in within their own Akashic records. They've been seeing how their own um, gender, let's say, for example, um, has marginalised other peoples, with an S, other peoples, and how they can inclusive uh, create inclusivity um, themselves through their own leadership in their line of work. Okay, so not by way of exclusivity, but by way of inclusivity, of interconnectedness, um, and expressing that, okay. Um, okay, beautiful. So we have green, essentially, on either side, and then we have blue, okay, and we have this blue and green and pink energy here. So the green chakra, the green colour, is the chakra of of um of the heart of the heart space so m there's also this balance between the mind and the heart space here taking place within the masculine energy 22 is the number of balance and divine love as well 27 and fertility rounds down to a nine which is endings which just turns into a completion so there is something that is being created here that the masculine is giving birth to and an ex it is an expression of their true self, of their true essence, beautiful channeling. And this birthing process through the canal as experience essentially for the divine masculine has been very painful, has been very challenging with number five rounded down with a 32 in the Merkaba card, um, has been challenging. They've been conflicted. How to merge both is what I'm hearing uh, by spirit. OK, so let's have a look now with the Starman Tarot and see how these messages connect in the Tarot. <laughs> Gorgeous. Now, the reason why I laugh is I haven't shuffled, but at the bottom of the deck, we have the death card, which may have come out, I think, in the last um reading where i use the starman tarot and again it's that energy of death it's the energy of challenge it's the energy of difficulty um the justice card flashed flashed as well um we also had the justice card again um in many of the readings about balance about um justice being served karma and we have the energy of the um of the Akashic records, you know, now the Divine Masculine has been going within, within, they've been going through a death process, you know, they've been going through a death process, the Divine Masculine has been going through a death process, a transformative experience that is very painful to deal with. Now, the Divine Feminine has already gone through that experience. She's recently gone through that experience. I say she because she can be a she. But the Divine Feminine has been going through um, that experience before and has come out of it fertile and abundant, courageous and creative, open to new experiences, open to a new chapter, open to a new dawn with number 9, 27, number 9. Now, 27, 22 and 32, without saying, could be ages, but they can also be, you know, hints at phone numbers uh, you know, telephone numbers, door numbers, um, car number plates, numbers that you're, you are seeing often. 22 is a number that is seen often on the divine love journey. I don't know why, but I'm being asked, I'm being told to share this animal totem, the orangutan. Some of you have the orangutan as a animal spirit guide animal totem i'm also hearing um okay i'm hearing i'm also hearing countries as well i'm hearing the philippines 
I'm hearing Indonesia, I'm hearing Philadelphia, I'm also hearing Polynesia. Okay, so Polynesia, Polynesia or Asia, um, Polynesia, oh gosh, Polynesia um, could be significant here. These could also be places that you'll be visiting. This could be um, dates on the 22nd of May. Someone's birthday could be on the 22nd of May, the 32 of May, the 27th of May. Now, because of the astrological changes, as I've been saying in the collective um, here on YouTube in particular, we have been and we are in season we are in a season of eclipses at this time so there are great changes and great shifts taking place now i know that a lot of you are experiencing that too great shifts and changes taking place um because that's the nature of eclipses there are endings and some of you are also experiencing deaths you know people around you that have become ill stricken um, have been dying as well there have also been death cycles on a metaphorical level but also death cycles um in in your in your relationships um in your career on your path there have been changes that have been taking place and they're not always easy now let's have a look at the starman tarot let's see what's happening in the divine love connection ten of swords the ending of betrayals is taking place the Ten of Swords, the ending of, I just heard catastrophe of difficulties. Okay, it's the end of the end. There is no going back here with the Ten of Swords. There is only the new birth of the beginning. A lot of you are giving birth to a new sense of self. You know, divine masculines in particular are going through a change within themselves where they are where they are birthing themselves into a new identity of who they want to be, what they want to represent, particularly if they identify as man. They are wanting to be a positive, affirmative um, leader symbol of masculinity in general. And so this is what the Divine Masculine has been going through um, for those who identify with man. And in this card, out of, out of chaos, out of pain, the Divine Masculine gives life to himself. and strikes a match and strikes a bond with spirit. Now, for a lot of divine masculines, they are going through a spiritual awakening and they are understanding the connectivity that they have within the, within themselves, within the universe, with spirit, with God, however they wish to call a greater understanding, a greater knowledge, a greater them, a greater I, a greater we, a greater thought, a greater creator I'm hearing a David Bowie song actually one second I don't know if I need to pause the video one second. It's with um, Chic. Fashion. Na, 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 na. No, that's the song that I'm hearing. I'm hearing the intro to that song. Um, fashion. So there's something about the fashion. Yes, they could be um, buying new clothes, purchasing new clothes, but it's more, it's beyond just the um, the physical 
superficial element it's actually not it's detaching themselves the divine masculine is, is detaching themselves from trends from the fashion of the day the fashion of thought thinking in the same way they're really um you divine masculines are really um going through i would say a bit of an identity crisis because what you thought you knew about yourself and your position in your world or your community divine masculines has been changing and for you to understand that you've had to let's say metaphorically take each of the ten swords out of you which is painful to do that if you've had something if you've had a bullet in your body if you've had uh, literally a bullet in your body or a sword in your body um a spear a knife in your body it's painful it's more painful to take it out so you've also been doing that maybe literally but also physically uh, spiritually speaking you've been taking out these wounds that have been inflicted on you maybe through projection through other masculine archetypes or through projection of the patriarchy and what masculinity should be so you've been taking these inner wounds um that have been not quite quite healed but they've these swords of truth or false truths have been inflicted on you over time over the generations by masculines where you've had to take each of these let's say metaphorical thought forms out of you and this is where the wounds have been healing and this is where the healing has begun now this may have been taking place over the last 10 um 10 months over this springtime since last spring swords of springtime and this this is not easy it is not easy to do that okay let's have a look at the next card we have the world wow so any anxiety that you've been going through divine masculines any anxiety any pain that you've been going through painful endings painful reflections um related to shame related to um false projections of self and identity you've been healing and you've come full circle as i said you've birthed into a new self and sense of self and this has been aided by the feminine archetype now your counterpart divine masculine your counterpart the divine feminine um is an example of being healed and is an example of someone who continues to heal um, as they as she connects and continues to connect with mother nature continues to connect with her balanced matriarchal system and systems within herself but also in her community she also leads by example and she's connected with her own sense of creativity and nature um, because she has been courageous and her courage is the energy of her masculine energy within her which she has led you towards also doing within yourself to courageously and boldly go essentially where no man has gone before which is to go within and have a deep reflection within yourself to connect with your sensitivities So not only have we entered a digital age collective, we've also entered a new age for masculines, <coughs> divine masculine archetypes, um, or becoming divine masculine archetypes, because it is a process as well. Um, to connect, to continue connecting with the divine feminine energy within themselves to connect with sensitivity to connect with tears emotions crying um modes of affection through speaking through touch 
and this is part of your vocation now so divine masculine's vocation is about expressing emotion okay so their vocation involves expression of emotion and i don't mean emotion of anger i mean emotion of love from the heart space okay so rather than eve being born out of adam it is Adam that is being born out of Eve, which is the natural progression of nature. Adam is born out of the feminine energy. You know, the the child is born out of the womb, the womb man, the woman. It is not the other way around. And so these pedagogical um ideas these um religious ideas these um dogmatic ideas um these societal ideas um have been mainly focused on the patriarchy on the masculine urge okay so we have the five of pentacles so they've the mass the divine masculine has been dealing with the separation between you and them the divine feminine and the divine masculine archetypes the divine masculine has been dealing with their separation within themselves as they've been you know when we go through an identity crisis which is what is being called in our society but on a spiritual level it is called an awakening we are stripping ourselves bare of identity okay we are stripping ourselves bare of connection to a past self we're stripping ourselves bare from a connection to a past way of thinking uh, a community of people a community thought you know a um there are job losses that take place during these awakenings as well so the divine masculine may also be going through a major change in their career sector at this time. Um, and this has been divinely orchestrated. They need to feel this separation, uh, not just with their their counterpart, which is the divine feminine, but also the separation with at some times, at some point on the awakening journey, with themselves and God, with themselves and a higher knowledge, a higher spirit. In order to ask the questions, where am I in this world? Not just on a physical level, but how am I contributing to humanity? How am I contributing to this world? What am I? Who am I? Big questions. Who am I is not just related to your name, your parents who gave life to you, um, where you studied, where you live, it's beyond that. So the Divine Masculine is looking at, at these things at this time as they have been going through separation of self and ego. Um, and it's painful, it's very painful, uh, you know, for you, for those of you who have been going through multiple awakenings, you understand what I'm talking about. This separation is the death of the ego as well. This feeling of being at a loss. The divine masculine has been feeling separated from the world, different from the world. In opposition to the world. In a rebellious nature, na nature against the status quo. And therefore they have, as they have been separating, as they have been breaking down ideas of self and place of self, they have been in the process of becoming. And that process leads to one oneness within themselves. And therefore they connect with the one spirit 
which is also themselves. And once they're able to connect with oneness within themselves and oneness within a higher self dynamic, they are then ready to connect with their one, the divine feminine. Absolutely gorgeous channeling. Beautiful. We have the seven of wands. So I do not read reversals here, but the seven of wands came out in the reverse. And I will I will take a note of that. Now, with the seven of wands, maybe in their past they have been on the defence about introspection. Oh, I'm taking I'm making excuses because I don't have time to do some self-reflection. I'm going to make excuses because I don't have the capacities or the energy or the time to meditate um, or um, men don't cry. There's no point you know, or I like these ideas about being more sensitive and being more in contact uh, and in connection with my my feminine energy, which is about being more expressive emotionally um, from the heart space, um, shedding a tear, saying to my fellow man and also brother, I love you. Um, these are great things, but I don't feel comfortable doing it. Now, I feel like this has been reversed. So the Divine Masculine during this time, during the Mercury retrograde season that we are in right now, they have been reflecting on that and how this has not been helping them. <clears throat> Saying that they would do one thing and not doing it. Now, how you do one thing is how you do absolutely everything. This is just one of those, one of those esoteric laws. <laughs> let's say, okay, as, as a way of um, identity study, you can look at how someone does one thing, washing up the dishes, cleaning the house, how they walk, is how they do everything, how they move whether they are in a wheelchair, whether they are, c carry a walking stick, whether they are walking in 100% capacity, whether they are swimming, whether they are training, you know, whatever it is that they're doing in motion, in kinetic movement, is how they do everything. And interestingly, how you move, how you kinetically move, in your time and place and space, now we're going very metaphysical as well, aren't we? Um, is how you do everything because everything is governed by those those laws of time and and space and place. They are all three interconnected. So if you are, for example, not one hundred percent able bodied, everything that you do in your life in your place and in your time is governed by that. So maybe there is a time, place, space difference between the divine masculine and divine feminine. Maybe there is a separation of worlds somehow through religious context. One of you is Jewish, the other one is um, agnostic, for example. Uh, one of you lives in Asia, the other one lives in New York, for example. You may not even speak the same language, for goodness sakes. <laughs> there could be an age difference. Obviously consenting above the age of 18, thank you. So... There could be that, and maybe the Divine Masculine, as they've been coming into their Divine Masculine, the energy and the process of becoming into the Divine Masculine archetype, had been making excuses 
that there was an age difference, so therefore there couldn't be a unity between both. Or there was a religious difference between both, therefore there couldn't be a unity, they couldn't they couldn't make the relationship happen. Or they were worlds apart, they lived in different cities, countries, states. You know, because, 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 therefore, you know, making up all of these bullshit excuses. How you do one thing is how you do everything. Where else have you, Divine Masculines, been making excuses in your life about changing something from your consciousness, a birth, a seed of an idea from your consciousness, pre-birth from the subconscious, by the way, from a consciousness into the physical world? How have you been making excuses for that to happen? In other elements of your life, outside of romance, forget romance. How have you been making excuses for change? Genuine change. Now, we've seen in 2020 that that was a great opportunity for a lot of people. A lot of people to make drastic changes in their lives. From career changes to relationship changes, platonic and romantic. Drastic, drastic changes. Now I'm seeing in my mind's eye the storm that had that had finally come was 2020. You know? That had prepared us all to become better, brighter individuals for change, for positive, affirmative change. Now the Divine Masculine is going through a similar re-understanding from 2020 looking back at how that year had changed their life and how they can continue this year to change their life because time really does not wait for everyone it doesn't wait it doesn't wait for anyone time as i always say is, is of course an illusion but time really waits for no man. The process of movement, the process of evolution here with the world card, with these death and new birth cycles, is a natural process. Change is inevitable. Number five. Evolution is inevitable. And within those changes... There is an inevitable chaos that can take place. It takes place in nature as our example. Where the leaves fall from trees. There is a deadening. Not only, not only in the, the leaves falling and the shedding process. But there is a deadening of sound. There is solitude. There is solace. There is loneliness that takes place during the winter months not only, you know, spiritually speaking, but also physically, as nature, as we, as part of nature, also evolve into this new spring energy of becoming a new self, essentially. Spring is the energy of becoming a new self, Spirit is saying. It would be blissful and ideal to consistently always live in spring and summer. But what autumn and winter teaches us is that we are also part of nature's process of shedding, of dying, of evolving and of becoming and birthing into something new. And this is what the Divine Masculine is also going through at this time this connection between themselves and nature but it's not even even that do you see how words are so limiting at times it's that we are all nature we are nature it's not that we are connected to which is which is presuming that we have a detachment of and from nature. It is that we are not in separation with nature. 
and the Divine Masculine is understanding that they are also <clears throat> and have never been in separation from their Divine Feminine. They've always been connected, always, through lifetimes, in the Akashic records that they've been looking in, in their past lives, through their meditation. They've been seeing, they've been getting glimpses of, even if they've been in denial with the Seven of Swords, that, oh, it's just a bunch of hobo, mumbo jumbo, hocus pocus. It's not. Energy is real. Energy never lies. And what Spirit is saying is that the Divine Masculine is now recognising at this time, <laughs> at this time, that they have always been connected to the Divine Feminine. Now, if you do like this reading so far, and you are resonating with this reading, please press the like button, make a comment, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. So, the Divine Masculine is seeing the connection. They're understanding the connection now between themselves and the universe, themselves and the Divine Feminine, um, and the Divine Union that is to come, essentially. And they are less on the defence and they are more open, okay? Because they are they are being led by the Divine Feminine to be more open. And this takes courage. They want to create. The Divine Masculine wants to create. They want to have children with the Divine Feminine. They are recognising that the Divine Feminine is also the Divine Masculine. They are recognising that they are mirrors of one. But there is always one <laughs> for one, part of one. Channeling here, Archangel Metatron. There is always one for one, created by the one. <laughs> Beautiful. So this is why we talk about the twin flame, the twin soul, two and two, 22. Because they're realising that no matter how much they d try to deny this connection and how they've also been, yes, maybe going through financial loss, but also have been pained by the separation have been hurt by the separation. This was necessary, guided by spirit, so they could recognise all of the things I mentioned earlier, that they could recognise that they were never really in separation from nature, never in really separation from God, never really in separation from themselves, never really in separation from their counterpart, Divine Feminine. They were always connected, but they couldn't see. And now they can. This is what the Divine Masculine is seeing, that the Divine Feminine has always been carrying a torch. There is a psychic connection between both. The Divine Feminine gives birth to death. Grains of Ma maize are being planted into the earth. Maybe this was during the winter months as well. It says no control here as well. Let's get one more card, please, Spirit. Thank you. Princess of Swords.
the divine masculine has been studying the divine feminine for quite some time and they've been hiding this but the divine masculine and the divine feminine have a psychic connection the divine feminine's aura is bright and light The divine masculine is being led by her shine, I'm hearing. The divine masculine is continuing to study, to focus. Maybe they are doing this through meditation, through plant medicine. I'm seeing someone who is smoking here. And maybe they've been looking at how to They've been studying how, how tobacco smoke has been affecting their heart space and their lungs. So they could be thinking about a new way of quitting smoking. Now there is a metropolis here. And there is another world upside down, which way is up and which way is down. Let's have a read of this card. Okay. Let's have a read of this card, the princess of swords. I value, wait, that's the princess of, <laughs> princess of pentacles. Um, As you know, I can never find the page. Whenever I need to look for a page, I can never seem to find it. <laughs> I don't know why that is, but I can never seem to find. Where is it? Okay. I call on to you to live your truth. Well, there you go. Everything I said earlier. So the Princess of Swords is about the Divine Masculine. So the Divine Feminine may have said something like that. I call on to you. I, I hope that you look inwards to find your truth. OK. I hope that you can live your truth i hope that you can live by example divine feminines may have actually vocalized this already the princess of swords brandishes her sword artfully and precisely daring she scare she scales the heights a true spider woman her domain is high up above the city streets running and leaping across rooftops Boasting both an agile young body and clear, penetrating mind, she's a fabulous fusion of superheroine and freedom fighter, a princess with an unquenchable thirst for truth. Her nimble mind grasps and connects stimuli at lightning speed, giving her an incredible outlook and ability. Um... A searing intelligence able to penetrate any circumstance, any drama. She can root out inconsistencies, delivering a powerful argument. Emotions don't get in her way as she almost marvels at the quickness of her own mind to instantly read a given situation, assimilating many facets, contrasting, comparing, synthesizing and evaluating possible solutions. 
It is almost a spot a sport for her. Equally, an avid raconteur with beautiful speaking voice and a wry wit, she draws out dilemmas, philosophies and wisdom in her storytelling appearing beyond her years. Her home is unashamedly in the sky, perched on the roofs of skyscrapers, like some exotic creature out of a scene from Blade Runner, Ridley Scott's great sci-fi epic which visually inspired a generation, is married with the animation of Ghost in the Shell, a Japanese manga science fiction comic book. Her mind soars freely in the sky, rising and gliding like a bird on the warm vertical currents of air, giving her a unique and calm perspective. Up high, she can see there are many other vistas to explore. She won't hesitate to sharpen and test her sword on the most challenging of these. Inherently hardworking, principled and knowledgeable, she will pitch her wits in the fight for equality and justice for all. You could be mistaken by thinking this princess will indeed change something profound about the world, if only it were that simple. Those ideals so beautifully articulated could easily remain in the mental realm and not actually be grounded in reality. The Princess of Swords indicates the brilliance of the mind is at your side, an agile advocate for cutting away any obstacles as you scale the heights to success. You may be called to review the set of principles and assumptions you are living by. Those high ideals you are pursuing or once believed in. Life is a great journey filled with setbacks, wrong turns and dead ends. You're being called to be an intrepid explorer, to question assumptions, values and ideals. What is the purpose of your life? Why are you here? What do you want? How might you navigate the difficulties, the inequalities and the dazzling array of opportunities to realise the best of your potential? What do you think is possible from the very best of human existence? The time is ripe for, for philosophical re-examination of the meaning of life and reacquaintance with some of the most remarkable thinkers and philosophers of time. You are ready to begin walking your talk. Now, these are things I've already mentioned here today. So the Divine Masculine is reviewing many, many elements of their life, but so are you, Divine Feminine. OK, as I say, the Divine Feminine, you know, is also someone who has eloquence, has a quick wit and an intellectual and an intelligent mind. And the Divine Masculine is being in awe of this. But also they're seeing that within themselves. So dazzle in the delights of your ambition and ambitions. Pay attention to your surroundings. Question your reality. Keep an open mind. OK, so this is air energy. Again, air energy is um, the throat chakra. The air energy is also um, Gemini, Aquarius and Libra. So check your chart and see how those placements in your natal chart in Western astrology or Vedic astrology are really affecting you at this time. We also have um, the world card here, which for me, I would say is all signs, to be honest with you. Success and accomplishment will soon be yours. OK, so they want to fast approach towards the divine feminine. And any betrayals that they have inflicted on the divine feminine, betrayals of trust, betrayal of not speaking their truth, betrayal of being at a distance emotionally and or physically, betrayal of denying of this connection. They're wanting to put to right and they're wanting to be successful um, at birthing whatever they've been feeling unconsciously about this connection in a positive, affirmative way into the physical through courage and through open dialogue I'm hearing we have the two of swords here now I feel like um this is past energy where they've been undecided about making that choice um about making that change um but I also do see the split of identity here as well the split of personality and the bottom of the deck we have the queen of pentacles where there is no surprise here the divine feminine um is being seen as someone who 
could make a wonderful partner because being married to someone being in a relationship with someone for the long run in the divine love connection is about creating a beautiful marriage of minds souls spirits um hearts and creating a partnership for life now the divine masculine is seeing that the divine feminine is someone that they wish to commit to for the long run beautiful look and underneath that we have the the divine masculine here with the king of pentacles they are now becoming more and more balanced within themselves they are now becoming more and more the divine masculine that they've always wanted to be now i mentioned here that this is something that they're going through now this is something that they are becoming and this is something that is taking place behind the scenes and they're working at with the seven of pentacles you know this is harvest energy that is coming into play here that they are anchoring at this time so this is absolutely gorgeous energy to have and behold in this um divine love spread now i did say to have and to hold divine masculine is seeing a marriage or at least a sacred ceremony or both with this connection um, because they're seeing the oneness within them both they are both reflections of each other whatever has been triggered um you know just by purely the divine feminine's existence within the divine masculine they've been healing and working on those wounds within themselves gorgeous They are becoming more reliable. They're becoming more deserving of themselves, but also of the relationship. If I see anything else here, I will let you know. Yes, of course, there is um, Earth energy here. Virgo, Capricorn, Taurus. Um, but it's about, again, grounding this spiritual connection into the physical, which is what the cards have just been saying, essentially. From the very beginning, it's activating the Akashic inheritance. There is an inheritance here. This is a gift offered by spirit for both to feel and meet each other. In this life and in other lives. But to actually have union. Now, not all people, not all counterparts come into union. They, they sometimes just don't because they one individual or both or another individual has not been doing the self work internally. OK, this is something that just happens. But I see here that um, that in this connection, so take it as it resonates. And if it has been resonating, let me know. Now, this card does want to come out because it came out earlier, just at the bottom of the deck. So I'm going to put this to the side. Bonne riche. So this is um, a wealthy man. Number 13 is the death card. So we have another death energy here. So the divine masculine has been working on their finances. If there have been financial losses, they've been working on building their finances. They've been working on becoming a better man, a wealthier man, a divine masculine that is in balance, but also is someone who is able to heal and support themselves. Now, I do want to say here something about mental health just briefly. There are many men uh, in general um, who have been through generations, through ideology um, in our world, um, Western or Eastern or otherwise, um, have been denied, have been mocked as well um for uh by for um communicating their emotions from a heart space now i see here that um the divine masculine has been seeking help somehow maybe through friendship or through a, mo a mother um to help them kind of become more in touch with the their maternal selves themselves um and you know this this makes a, a a man complete essentially when they are when they are in balance with their divine masculine energy and divine feminine energy. Okay. So they have been transforming their their finances too. 
you know the fashion element as well the fa 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 fashion la 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 so i also see here that um yes on a superficial element <laughs> the divine masculine has also been transforming their look their appearance um i also see that they have been transforming their appearance them themselves so when you do come into union this masculine has transformed themselves so the masculine that you had dealt with from the past is not the same masculine who is coming through in your present and future there is salon here 21 so we have 21 here in the world card and underneath that we have 21 which is interesting so we have this intimacy energy here we have uh, a desire to to meet up a desire to um to connect to, to date to have intimate relations with each other but i also see here that there is an openness energy this is something that is in expectation again fertility energy there this is something to be expected this is something that's going to be birthing now for those of you divine feminines who are wanting children i do see that there is going to be a transformative time in your life where you will be expecting a child for those of you who are wanting that for those who don't then that's fine you can resonate with other elements like adoption but i do see children here i also see you know physical intimacy as well uh there is an invitation here as well with uh salon there is an invitation from the divine masculine can you see how this card came out first and first here the divine masculine is wanting to invite the divine feminine maybe on the 21st 22nd 27th or the 5th of may which has passed already uh, or the 13th of may timeless video timeless reading take it as it resonates those dates according to the month um that you're presently watching this video or the next month um to their home there could be an invitation to their home to meet and I do see two females here as well. I see two females here. Maybe there's been one that's been left behind and one that's been entering, which is the divine feminine that I am connecting to at this time. Well, exactly, we have personne first. We have a, um, you know, an untrustworthy person here, a false individual, a false woman, a false person. Now, whoever they were dealing with, the divine masculine may have been dealing with a false connection okay a false connection a charade a charade of a marriage a charade a charade of a connection and underneath that you know the five pentacles and underneath that we have the fight the, the 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 false person so this your divine masculine was not meant to uh marry this person was not meant to be in a connection with this person here. For some of this had to happen um, due to karma that had to be cleared out in the Akasha. Okay, so this also may have had to happen because we have infinity here, number eight. So this is something that goes beyond time timelines. Um, this karmic lesson had to take place and in a sense in a sense i see that the divine masculine is strangely moving into territory where there are in acceptance of that where this had to, this was a fated connection this false person because they had to learn how to become better individuals themselves better men essentially um they had to heal um their own wounds because remember whoever you are with you are vibrating at their frequency so the divine masculine was not a divine masculine at the time they were not becoming divine masculine they were in the status quo energy they were in stasis they were also in an energy of just going by the flow of things doing whatever everyone else does because maybe it was easier so 
there's been a separation with this other individual. I also just got a, a sharp pain and twang on my lower back on the right. So what I'm feeling here is that this person, the, your masculine, your divine masculine has been uh, betrayed, has been cheated on, has been wounded. Betrayed by friends. Betrayed by this false person. Their, this, this person who they were not meant to marry, essentially. Or be in a relationship with. Now, this person that they were connected to before may have been working and working in dark arts, the dark, dark magic, you know. But I also see the divine masculine has been hiding. They've been hiding their true selves. They have been hiding their true selves. And there may have also been um, false flags here. So red flags um, in your connection because they may have been hiding something. We have courtesier, which is courtship. So the divine masculine is wanting to court the feminine again. They're wanting to go on a date. They're wanting to do things traditionally. They're wanting to get to know you better. They're wanting to get you know to get to know you all over again. Number four is a number of stability, and the four in the tarot is the emperor. So the divine masculine, again, is becoming the better selves. They are becoming the ultimate masculine, which is the emperor, the divine masculine itself. Beautiful. They are being activated at this time to become their truest nature. Stable within themselves, more certain within themselves as well. Poverty. So we have poverty here. The divine masculine has been healing lack mentality, poverty wounds as well. They've been healing also their financial losses too. They've been healing how they can be more abundant within themselves. We have a black cat here as well. So we have a black cat as a spirit guide too. Some, some, there's an element of magic here. But the black cat is looking at the rat here and how to catch the rat. Also, is very good with... Um, I love cats. Um, cats are great with... Um, as pest control <laughs> aren't they so we have mystery here we have magic here we also have pest control you know getting rid of vermin getting rid of detritus getting rid of things that no longer serves them getting rid of individuals who are not vibrating on the same frequency as the divine masculine is now vibrating on we have 37 here which rounds down to it rounds up to a 10 so 10 rounds down to a one which is endings and new beginnings and they're also becoming the one within themselves remember i spoke about that channeled that earlier They're also seeing you as the one. Maybe they thought that they were undeserving of this great love. I'll repeat that again. Maybe the Divine Masculine thought that they were undeserving of this great love. But now they do. I want to do something fun here. I'm being called to add up all these numbers as singular forms. So 13 adds up to four. Four again is the Divine Masculine, Emperor. 21 is the World card. So they are going to come back around. There is flight travel and um, a, want, a wanting to, to complete and become union, you know, a, un, a unity. Um, it is on the Divine Masculine's mind at this time as well. Um, as they've been working on their finances, they've also been secretly hiding that this is what they've been wanting to come together with their true counterpart. So we have four, three. Three is the divine feminine energy and they're next to each other here. Beautiful. Divine feminine has been in expectation, has been waiting, has been opening up space, has been maybe cleaning up their home, uh, refreshing bed sheets, um, doing some spring cleaning as well because they are knowing and are in anticipation of this visitation from the divine masculine so we've got four and three 
which adds up to a seven. And then we have number eight here. So this false person they were dealing with um, has left behind. They are in separation from this person. And they may have been the third wheel of this connection all along. Um, number eight is the chariot, which we had here in the Merkaba. So they have been, there are now at a time where they're focusing on you, Divine Feminines, and they're wanting to make this connection successful. Also, this trip to you successful too. So we had um, four, five, six, seven, and eight is 15. Okay, so 15 in the tarot is the death, is the devil card. Again, you know, we have toxicity here, vermin energy we mentioned earlier. Not to say that people are vermin, but I'm just saying that there are, you know, controls sometimes that we feel are desires are out of our control but we've had to learn how to control our desires this can also be obsession uh this could also be um you know lack mentality feeling you are, are unworthy of a great connection so therefore you go and settle with someone who treats you like shit who abuses you you know who, who doesn't treat you well you know those elements or just naturally just be, not being able to um see beyond your own capacities and capabilities and so you settle with the wrong person okay so we have 15 here okay and five and one rounds down to a six which is the lover's card gemini energy capricorn energy as well with um the devil card mentioned aries energy mentioned with the emperor uh taurus energy and libra energy exalted in pisces energy and um, exemplified in the empress energy with number three um and and number four again we mentioned earlier was the um was the emperor so the emperor divine masculine is wanting to date and this is something that's going to be taking place in the near future uh take heed of the numbers the dates 13 21 8 4 um and the 10th of may in particular the 5th of may the 22nd of may and 27th of may as well could be significant in this divine connection so we have 15 rounding down to a I mean, adding to four is 19, uh, nine and one is 10, again is the one. The Divine Masculine is wanting to approach the Divine Feminine and say, and emote vocally saying, you are the one, you're the one for me. There could also be a, pr a proposition here, a proposal, a promise. Um, so an engagement even. Um, I want to have children with you. Like these are things that the Divine Masculine is wanting to express. We have fertility here, remember. We mentioned that too. So what did we have? We had uh, 19, didn't we? And then 37, 8, 9, and t uh, 8, 9, 10 uh, is completion. So they have completed um, a cycle in their life. They've completed feeling like crap. They've completed this feeling of um, being less empowered. They're feeling more empowered. Okay um so we had 19 and 10 so that's 29 okay so the 29th of may is also going to be very significant for some of you so the latter part of may could be very significant but take it as it resonates and let me know as well um 29th of may uh, or the 29th is 11 so 11 could be significant as well here the 11th of may this could be someone's birthday as well the 11 is the twin flame now i have lit two candles here on my left as you can see and we also have the skull candles here created by beth as well um, and if you want to purchase her candles these candles in particular you can find her link in the description below as well so check her out also check out her um, Instagram page where she does some channeling, she does some tarot readings and many other things too. She's part of the Abstract Medicine Collective. So interesting, number 11 is a master number and we do not round down 11s. Master numbers. So the 11 is the twin flame connection actually coming together. I feel like the 11th of May is going to be a portal for the twin flames or the, the, let's just say the divine lovers because the, the twin flame thing can also be a bit of a dogma and i don't want you to just focus on that dogma okay so there is uh, abundance here and we have tribunal so we have the 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 
the judgment energy um we have law here so we have a change with 23 with uh, with five uh a change taking place in the law since you know we have uh, person principal who is also being shown here which is the the main female the divine feminine is the main female and the divine masculine sees that okay so they're maybe making arrangements in their romantic situation um wanting to send a message as well um to the divine feminine because they are needing to close out a cycle here could be you know separate divorces uh, legal situations whatever it may be um in order to make space uh, and make way for the divine connection that will come beautiful let's get the romance angels underneath that we have heart to heart conversation so yes um, the divine masculine is wanting to have a heart to heart conversation. Now, in your past, the divine feminine was the one that had a heart to heart conversation with the divine masculine saying, you know, you are the one for me. And this was not something that the divine ma feminine took lightly. They felt it within their head, their heart, their mind, their, their, their spirit, their soul that the divine masculine was the one for them now i'm seeing the divine masculine is now seeing the divine feminine as the one for them and is changing their denial concepts <laughs> they're no longer in denial of the connection okay so let's have a look and see let me just spit the deck just shuffle a little bit Split the deck again, they're saying. Okay. One, two. Oh, they're saying four times. Okay. Okay, they're saying stop. Okay, so let's have a look and see. Soulmate. I mean, that's just it, you know, that this is a soulmate connection. Yes, this is your soulmate. So the divine masculine is seeing the divine feminine is their soulmate, is the one. Okay. I want to read that card. Look, look how comfortable they are in each other's presence. You chose this card because you wonder if a certain person is your soulmate and the answer is yes. As we all do, you have many soulmates, beings, with whom you share a mystical soul connection and life path. Soulmates incarnate with the plan of coming together for a mutual spiritual and personal growth. As you suspected, the person you're inquiring about is one of yours. That sense of familiarity and comfort you felt when you first met also indicates your soulmate bond. This card sometimes comes to those who ask, when will I meet my soulmate or will I ever meet my soulmate as val validation that this will occur. Many times this is a person whom you already know. Although romantic sparks didn't fly at first, you'll have another opportunity to explore passion together. Amazing. Let's get the next card. Trust. The Divine Masculine is trusting the connection, is trusting um, the guidance from spirit, is trusting their gut. And there is trust between both as well. The Divine Masculine trusts the Divine Feminine. The Divine Feminine also trusts the Divine Masculine will come in in order to form union. The situation is calling for you to have faith. Let's have a look. If you'd like to tip me for this reading, I'd be very grateful. You can find the information 
on my website, Cristalina Fischetti, on the healing page. On the healing page, there are three tip jars and you can tip me there. I do appreciate your reciprocation of energy here, exchange. Um, if you'd also like a private reading with regard to your own personal connection, please do send me a specific question. It helps. It's better to send a specific question with regard to your situation, whatever it may be, so I may read on it. OK, please also like the video, press the like button, and subscribe to the channel now, please. Thank you. In response to your question, the Romance Angels asks you, ask you to trust that everything is exactly as it needs to be. Do not add fear to the situation, which will only create drama and negativity. Instead, the angels ask you to release your worries to them. Your present situation is here to bring you blessings and personal growth, leading to the beautiful romantic love you so deeply desire and deserve. As you follow the path where you're currently on, trust that it's leading you in the right direction. Your faith uplifts your energy, which in turn attracts positive experiences and people, including your romantic partner. This truly is a situation where faith, with faith, all things are possible. Next card getting to know each other, exactly what I mentioned earlier. So your divine masculine is wanting to get to know each other, you, each other again, you're wanting to know each other again, divine masculine is going to be um, in charge of this, okay, focusing on this. As you reveal your innermost selves to each other, your bond deepens. So you may have got to know this person um, as they've been in a separation um, from a previous relationship as well. Or you will be meeting someone um, who is currently in divorce procedures, in a separation from someone else um, and is closing up a chapter in their life, may have broken up with someone else before you. You've created upheaval in their life, I'm hearing. <laughs> that's funny. You've activated something within them, that's for sure. The romance angels are guiding you to create intimacy with your partner by revealing your true feelings, your dreams and desires and the other innermost aspects of yourselves. You discover commonalities and learn new ways of relating. So this could be friendship involved first before a romantic situation ensues. If you're presently in a relationship, this card is a message of healing through honest dialogue. This is particularly true if you've stuffed down feelings instead of discussing discussing them with your partner. Perhaps sitting together with a counsellor will give you the strength and support to admit them. Regardless, this card clearly guides you towards holding deep and honest discussions for the benefit of your love life. OK, so communication is key here, indicated here. I also want to point out we have 37 here. Um, again, so we have 37 here too. So whatever was lacking, whatever communication that was lacking or no communication during the separation was lacking, there is going to be an opportunity for communication. Maybe on the 10th of May. There's a pigeon staring at me from the window. Hi, she's beautiful. It's a wood pigeon. <laughs> All right, let's get another card here. Let's see. Um, healing family issues. OK, so there's your love life benefits as you forgive your parents. So the divine masculine has been healing, has been going to a counsellor, a therapist, speaking with friends, healing their connections with their friends, healing their connection with their own family members as well. Healing trauma from past um, connections, uh, maybe even healing from family issues as well. Is issues rather been working on pronouncing my issues rather than issues because it's not actually correct in English. OK, so. OK, so it says here. 
this has been um again deep healing and this has been necessary for the divine masculine to go within to heal um family issues and so healing trauma because they had to go deep in order to have this connection that they so desire with you divine feminines um the divine masculines have to really do deep work deep healing deep introspection going back generations remember i spoke about patriarchy as well even society in societal um contexts as well okay so the answers to your prayers about your love life are based are based in your feelings about your mother and father i also want to say that they may have been brought up in a connection in a family dynamic where either both parents separated or there was lack of tenderness within the connection there may have been lots of conflict and fighting as well um or betrayal okay so the ro the romance angels see that you're you'd better sorry the romance angels see that you'd benefit from releasing old anger towards one or both of them that's because your feelings about your parents influence your choice of romantic partner and the way in which you deal with relationships you can ask the angels to help you put forgiveness into action to forgive someone doesn't mean that you are endorsing his or her behaviour. The angels will tell you rather that doing so is a form of deep emotional detoxification. It means I'm no longer willing to carry toxic energy within my mind and body. When you find inner peace with your parents, you'll no longer need to attract unhealthy relationship patterns and partners as a way of healing family emotional wounds. All of your relationships, especially the one you have with yourself, will benefit. Exactly. And then last but not least, let's have a look at one more card. You deserve love. Now, the Divine Masculine is seeing now that they deserve love. And they are doing the internal work for that. They're also seeing that you deserve love, Divine Feminine. But you deserve their love. <laughs> a little bit possessive here, but in a good way. So they're claiming you. They're wanting to come in to claim you. This isn't about a power dynamic. This is a healthy connection. It's a healthy dynamic where they felt lacking in this connection or, or undeserving of this connection or undeserving of a great love. They are now deserving that. They see that you, you um, would benefit from their love too and vice versa. The romance angels are cheering you on in your quest for great love. There you go. By letting you know that you deserve it. As a child of God, you're naturally a loving and lovable person, as is everyone. You have the right to be treated with kindness and respect by everyone in your life. If you've had harsh life experiences, you may have blamed yourself and felt unworthy of receiving affection. This card is a reassurance that you do deserve it. You are beautiful. You are a beautiful being of God's pure love and light. No matter what any person has said or done to you and no matter what happened in the past, God's handiwork can never be undone. The more you affirm, I am lovable, I am loved, I am loving, the more this experience comes true for you. Affirmations help you believe spiritual truths as a, at a deep unconscious level. This in turn allows you to attract loving people, relationships and circumstances, and you definitely deserve it. OK, um, I'm actually not going to read these cards because it's already been quite a lengthy reading, but. Um, I feel like everything that was said needed to be said here, but again, if you'd like a private reading, let me know. And we have at the bottom of the deck finances and career. So financial issues are a factor in your love life right now. So there were financial issues um, or issues in Divine Masculine's past and they've been creating um, something beautiful and abundant. They've been working on their finances and their career. They've also been working on forgiving and learning as well. 
there is engagement in the back of their mind here, you know, or this they want this connection to ascend to a high level commitment or ascend to the next level. And we have the, them wanting to stay optimistic. They're wanting to retreat and have solace with you. We also have wedding here. OK, so beautiful energies. If you do like this reading, please press the like button. Please also write down at the bottom in the comments. I am lovable. I am loved. I am loving. I am lovable. I am loved. I am loving. Thank you so much beautiful channeling it's been wonderful reading your energies today let me know how it resonates i'm sending you so much love your way have a beautiful day god bless see you in the next reading bye for now